Hello, welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 6 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about events in the page lifecycle of an ASP.NET web application. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 3, 4 and 5 of this video series. In part 4 of this video series, we have discussed that events can occur at three levels in an ASP.NET web application. Events can occur at the application level. Examples of application level events include session start, session end, application start, application end, etc. And the application level events reside in global.asax file. Events can also occur at the page or the web form level. Examples of page level events include page load, page pre-render, etc. We will be talking about page level events in this session. Events can also occur at the control level. Examples of control level events include click event of a button control, selected index changed event of a drop-down list, text changed event of a text box, etc. We will be talking about control level events in a later video session. And from the previous parts in this video series, we know that web applications work on a stateless protocol. Every time a request is made for a web form, the following sequence of events occur. Web application creates an instance of the web form that is requested, process the events of the web form and controls, generates the HTML and sends that HTML back to the client who has requested that web form and then the web form gets destroyed and removed from the web server memory. With this knowledge, now let's dive into the events in a page lifecycle. Now, in this table, you can see some of the commonly used events in the lifecycle of an ASP.NET web form. Now, there are more events than this, but these are the commonly used ones. And these events are listed in the order of their occurrence, except for this error event that you can see in the last, which occurs only if there is an unhandled exception. Now, in fact, this page underscore error event is extensively used to handle the unhandled exceptions and then log the information about them either in a database or log them to an event viewer. In fact, we will actually see how to do that in a later video session when we talk about exception handling in an ASP.NET web application. So the first event in the lifecycle of an ASP.NET web form is the pre-init event. Pre-init standing for pre-initialization. As the name suggests, this event happens just before page initialization event starts. And the page properties like ease-postback, ease-callback, and ease-cross-page-postback are set at this stage. Now, if you don't understand what these properties are, don't worry. We will be talking about them in a great detail in later video sessions. And this event allows us to set the master page and theme of a web application dynamically. Now, most of the time, we set the theme and master page statically at design time. But then if you want to do that dynamically at runtime, you can do that as well using this pre-initialization event. And anytime you are working with dynamic controls, we extensively use pre-initialization event. And in fact, we will see how to work with dynamic controls in a later video session. And if you're wondering what are dynamic, you know, what do we mean by saying, you know, working with dynamic controls, usually, you know, when we design a web application at the design time, we drag and drop button and, you know, text box and any other control from the tool box onto the web form. But if there is ever a need for us to create these controls dynamically at the runtime, then, you know, pre-initialization event can, can be very useful there. We will be talking about working with these dynamic controls in a later session. The next event is the init event, init standing for initialization. So page init event occurs after the init event of all the individual controls on the web form. And this is very important to keep in mind. Look at this, that you have a web form and on the web form you can have several controls like button, text box, etc. So the init event of the web form itself, you know, occurs after the init event of all the individual controls on that web form. Okay, and we use this event to read or initialize any of these control properties. And in fact, one of the very important points to keep in mind about page initialization is that the server controls, the ASP.NET server controls, are loaded and initialized from the web server, you know, from the web form's view state at this stage. 
So this is one of the very common interview question as well. They could ask you in, in two ways. They could ask you what happens during page initialization or when does view state restoration happens in an ASP.NET page lifecycle. So view state restoration meaning when are the controls initialized you know with the web forms view state data during the page initialization state or view state restoration happens during page init. Okay and then the next stage is the init complete and as the name suggests initialization complete so obviously this event happens immediately after page initialization the next event is the preload event preload you know as the name says you know this event happens just before the page load event and then obviously load event and page load event occurs this is again very important to keep in mind the page load event occurs before the load event of all the individual controls on that web form so if you remember init event so page initialization event occurs after the init event of all the individual controls on that web form whereas page load event occurs before the load event of all the individual controls on the web form so a slight difference keep that in mind and then control level events. So this is a slight deviation here. So until load, all these are page level events. Pre-init, init, init complete, preload, load. So after all these page level events are processed, any control events that happens, for example, button click, drop down list, selected index change, you know, those control level events are processed at this stage. So after the page load event occurs, the control events like buttons, buttons click, drop downs, drop down list, selected index changed, etc., you know, they occur here. And then after the control events are processed, then load complete event happens. Okay, so this event is raised after the control events are handled. And then after load complete pre-render again as the name says this event is raised just before the rendering stage of the page if you're wondering what rendering means rendering means you know sending that HTML rendering the actual page and pre-render complete raised immediately after the pre-render event and finally you know after pre-render complete what happens the HTML is sent back to the client now the page is ready to be destroyed and discarded that's when the unload event will be fired Okay, so at this stage, you know, this unload event is raised for each control and then for the page itself. Okay, at this stage, the page is unloaded from the memory. It's removed from the web server's memory because remember, web applications work on a stateless protocol. Whenever a request is made, an instance of that web form and all the controls is created, you know, all these events are processed, HTML is generated, send, it, send the HTML back to the client, on the web server what should happen to the web form instance and any memory that it's consuming it has to be unloaded from that memory destroyed completely okay and that's what happens during unload event and error event as we discussed this you know this does not happen every time it only occurs when there is an unhandled exception on that page which we'll be talking about in a later video session now let's look at you know how you know let's let's put this in action let's actually see the order of the events execution now if you look at this it's very pretty I mean it's pretty simple to understand all I have is I have these event handlers you know I have an event handler for page pre initialization page initialization and all the events that we have just seen now and then when I actually run the web form you should see that the events get fired in this order so if you look at what we are doing here, we are actually writing, you know, the name of the event to the response object. And you are wondering, okay, what is this BR within that double quote? It's nothing but it's basically to induce a space. If you don't include that break HTML element there, what happens is everything comes in one line and, and the output won't be that clear. That's why I'm including that HTML break, you know, with, with the name of the event itself. So let's look at this in action. So I have this ASP.NET web application already created. Now if you look at this web form, it's pretty simple. All it has is the code that you have seen on the slide. I've just copied and pasted that here. So now if I run this, look at what's going to happen. 
So obviously the output will be what you have seen in the slide. So page pre init, then initialization init complete in that order. And now one important thing to keep in mind is that look at this. I have intentionally un I mean commented response dot write call, you know, in page unload event handler. Now what happens if we uncomment that? Let's uncomment that. So I'm uncommenting response.write from page unload. Let's rerun this, control F5. So let's see what's gonna happen. Look at this, I get an exception, system.web.http exception. It says response is not available in this context. And that makes perfect sense. Look at this, if you uncomment this line, what's gonna happen? We get this error message, you know, um, response is not available in this context and that makes perfect sense because you know when does unload event fired this event is fired after actually you know all the processing of the web form is done the HTML is generated and that HTML is completely sent you know rendered and sent back to the client who requested that web form and now this web form during the unload stage is actually ready to be destroyed and discarded so at this point, obviously, the request and response objects will not be available, and that's what is the error message. So we have already generated the required HTML that we want to send back to the client. So during the unload process, you cannot, you know, ask it to, you know, send some more HTML back to the client who has requested that web form. At this stage, the web form, in fact, is ready to be discarded. That's why this this error message makes perfect sense. All right, that's it in this video session. On this slide, you can see resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.